Today we're breaking down the Air Jordan 39s. Let's go. What's good everyone? Welcome back to the channel. It's Zach here, Tams, it's Kicks, and today we're breaking down the 39th Air Jordan. Kind of nuts, but Jordan just launched their 39th Air Jordan on this flagship model and it is honestly pretty fire. So we're gonna break it down today. Gonna go through traction, cushion, support, materials, fit, blah, 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 all that good stuff relating to the shoe. I just got back from practice, honestly, with these shoes, and these honestly kind of surprised me, but with the price point, it's kind of like, you hope they're this good anyways, but yeah. So like I mentioned, $200 for these bad boys. Price point kind of steep. Um, they just barely have been coming out, so like, not a ton of players have been wearing them, but like this first colorway, this white one is so clean. The box is like, way better than the last Air Jordans with that like return to next nature, recycle, recycle, all that. Nah, give me this, $200. I love this bold like Air Jordan Type 39 print on there. Here are the bad boys, the Air Jordan 39s. Now, like I said, for 200, I was like, these better blow me away or I'm gonna be kind of mad that these were 200 bones, but nah, they did the job. Like they are soft, they are flexible. Honestly, maybe a little too flexible. Cushion was nice, breathability was superb and the tongue like these were pretty fire so let's break them down the traction features a modified herringbone pattern with a translucent rubber all right first let's get the boring stuff out of the way the entire traction is just a cup sole unit like you have this whole thing in here you cannot even kind of see the shape of it as it's shaped into this cup unit and it felt so well like the traction and cushion are very like one in one like you really feel connected with the two um for companies like, okay, so we know translucent rubber isn't the most durable thing, but like, this is pretty solid. Like, out of the translucent rubbers I've seen, like this was playing really good off the bat. Like we have, well, we got a ton. Like even just here, we have the Sabrina ones. This translucent rubber, compared to this, I mean, not good so far. It's already been peeling for me. I've had to like tone back how much I wear them just to like kind of keep the longevity of them. But these ones felt really good and it feels like it's gonna break in very well. It doesn't go too far up on the sides at all with the traction powder, but that herringbone does play pretty good. Outdoor use, it's a, I think it's gonna be a little more durable than past Jordans, but like, I definitely wouldn't recommend going outdoors with them for $200. Like, go get a $100 Lamello shoe or something to do that, but they're pretty solid. The cushion that Jordan brand is introducing their new ZoomX foam on these. Okay, so this is a full length setup. Um, no shank plate, which is kind of interesting, like torsion wise and like control stability, but it works. I think it's that capsule in there because it feels so well. And we have seen the, uh, the ZoomX on the GT Cut 3s. It felt almost exactly identical. I do feel like I kind of like the upper on this a little better. I feel like it cups your foot in better and your ankle and like this part feels a little better than the threes. But like overall, the, it felt really good on the foot. Like right when you put them on, you're like, okay, like you can feel that bounciness to it. And we'll get into how that plays with like this upper and like how it kind of all molds together a little bit. But I mean, a dream setup on these, if it works right, like over time, we're gonna see how it breaks down. But like from first bat, I was pretty impressed with it. Materials feature a tight knit mesh and some TPU coverings. Textile, textile, textile. All around the shoe, like I said, you got the mesh, the textile, little TPU coverings. You can kind of see it's like sprinkled about here. Um, I do like how they go to this little like soft faux leather knot here to give a little bit of just like softness and breathability to the shoe here. And then finishing it off, which is a very nice touch here to give it a little more of that TPU and mesh coverage, that tight knit here. And these, areas, which I feel like are pretty high wear areas, moving side to sides and stuff. So pretty impressed with that. Um, you got this black plate in here too, which we'll talk about as well. That is a lot to do with um, the materials and stuff as well, because these, as you can tell, like, I mean, you can just like, I don't know how this looks on camera, but like you can just move these bad boys around. Like there's not much up there, but the materials feel really good on the foot, especially this tongue. This was one thing I was happy to see. They went with like the Kobe, I always compare it to the Kobe fives. They have like the, the tongue gets connected inside the shoe. And so it's like a one unit and then it goes down. If you get, if you get what I'm saying, but like it felt good. It definitely true to size. This is one thing I haven't liked that much about Jordan shoes is the laces have just been freaking monsters, like mile long laces. And sometimes I don't typically like to do it to the top notch on some um, Jordans because that cut is kind of weird and it digs into my um, calcaneus, like my ankle bone right here. So. They're long, the laces are long, which kind of affects the fit, I'd say a little bit, because if you go one down, it kind of feels a little looser in this back 
um, heel area. So you got to tighten up a couple times. You know, you got you got to pull the laces. But overall, the fit is definitely true to size. So don't don't go like away from true to size. I'd say, but just be wary of like the cut and the feel of that on the shoe. So finally, like I said, the sidewall cup sole here fits all around the shoe. Feels very well with the support. Um, and like I just liked it. Like I feel like it wasn't restrictive at all. It really was a cohesive unit. The only thing I'd say is the cut was a little weird on my specific foot, my specific ankle, but I didn't feel like prohibiting at all. I just kind of went down to the next lace toggle. Just to kind of feel like that would kind of be better, but you also have a crash pad in here in the insole, which is gonna help with like a little more stability, a little more side to side movements and all that stuff. So overall, I mean, for $200, they did what they're supposed to do. All right, kind of my new scoring system with this, um, but traction and cushion giving it a great rating. I thought it was very good, like above the good rating. The great is what I was feeling because it just felt really good. I'm gonna have to break them down for sure a lot more to see how they play, but first bat, like it was really flowing good. Materials and fit, I'm gonna give them a good. I, I'm not the biggest fan, I'd say. Like the materials didn't blow me away at all. Like sometimes you put the shoe on and you're like, oh yeah, like this is it. Like the materials feel good. I think it's just because of how like flimsy they are. Like, I don't know if I like that as much, but I like the softness. The softness was a plus for me. So there, with the fit, it's a basic fitting shoe. Like, I mean, it's gonna fit true to size. You're gonna have some people that have struggles if they have a wide foot, if they like a little bit more room here, a little tighter here. Like, so overall the fit was just pretty solid. And finally, like I said, with the support, I think the support's pretty mid on these. Like, usually a shoe with this kind of cut, this mid, like typical cut, a lot of shoes have been at this, this height recently, and these didn't do it for me. I just didn't feel as locked in, and I think it has to do with, it reminds me a lot of the Tatum ones, and it was just like a longer, skinny um, area here with a tongue, and then when you would lace it up, you're just like, why are these laces so long? And like, it, it just kind of didn't work in this area as much for me, but overall, I still liked it. Like I said, that's the Jordan 39. Let me know what you guys think about these shoes down in the comments. For $200, they better have been this fire. And they lived up to the $200 price. So definitely a pretty strong contender for one of the top shoes of the year, I'd say. I'll have to break them down more to see how this traction and cushion feels. But like overall, I loved them. So let me know what you guys think about them in the comments. Jordan 39s, baby. We'll see you guys on the next one.